Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming out on a bright early Saturday morning. Uh, at least I made it 10 and not 9, because I do like to sleep in a little too. Uh, by that, I mean 6.30. <laughs> um, so welcome to our, our Camp Woods at Leader meeting for the, the coming summer, 2016. Uh, for the, I see some familiar faces and some new faces. Uh, which is great. For those that don't know, my name is Josh. I am the camp director for Witsit. Um, I have been working at Witsit. This will be my 13th summer, if I remember correctly. So I've been working there for a long time. I kind of started off at the bottom as a little peon, and over the years has worked my way up. I've been directors of many different areas, and then eventually taking over uh, as camp director in 2013. Um, so this has been my, my fourth summer uh, as camp director. Um, so today's meeting, we are going to be going through this leader's packet that everybody has. Um, if not, we have a couple more copies being printed. You can always get one. Um, and we will also be putting this on the website and emailing it out to the leaders in Double Knot um, just so you can get it. Because I know as many times as I've gone through this over the last week and as many times as my staff have gone through this over the last week, we will find mistakes and errors because I already caught one after I started printing this morning. <laughs> so we will collect those errors, and they will be sent out by next Wednesday um, and then put on the website. Uh, if they are up sooner, we will let you guys know, but they will be up there for you. Um, I know the, probably the number one question everybody wants to know is everything about merit badges. Let's save those because the last half of the packet is about the merit badges and the program. So they are addressed in here, and we'll go over those when we get to that point. Um, so I just ask that you save those until that point. Um, so we are going to get started. Um, we have a couple of table of contents telling you what's in here. Uh, a little letter uh, to you guys explaining what is in this guide and what it's about. Um, the next page after that is our camp map. Uh, so it just gives you a general idea of the layout of camp, where things are located, campsites, uh, different program areas like the waterfront and the, the, the big top where we're, our dining hall where we eat um, and things like that. Just note it's not to scale. It's, it's actually as accurate as we could possibly get. About four years ago I had somebody walk around camp taking GPS coordinates of every spot and then we kind of overlaid those on a map and kind of put together the best map we could do. Um, but we do understand it's not to scale. Um, the camp is on 88 acres. Um, so from the dining hall to the high ropes course is just under a mile. I think it's like 0.8 mi of a mile. Um, so it usually takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes to walk from there to, to high adventure, depending on how quick your scouts are. So that kind of gives you a scale of, of our map. Um, cool. Moving on to the next page. Uh, that is a, gives a sample of our daily schedule. Um, I say a sample. It's just a quick overlook. Uh, so much is going to happen um, throughout the week that you will be informed of. Um, Sunday, as we come and check in, there will be a leaders meeting. Um, we do disseminate information every day at both morning and evening colors. Um, so this kind of gives you an overlay, but we have a lot more that doesn't make this. And, you know, we'll have schedules posted around and telling your, your SPLs at their SPL meetings what's going on and, and all those kind of things. So it gives you a sample. Um, this first page is for weeks one, three to seven. Um, the next page, which is I've already found one mistake, this is the schedule for week two. Um, just ignore the dates at the top. Those were 2015. I got to fix that for 2016. Um, week two, for those that don't know, is a special late start week. Um, so what I mean by that is instead of having everybody come on Saturday or Sunday to check in, we will be doing check-ins on Monday morning for week two, and that's to help accommodate units that can't travel during the normal um, week or during the normal time. Yes. There is. So the way that check-in, I'll just run through it really quick. The way it's going to work is we're going to be opening up at um, in the morning, I think 9, but if it changes, I'll send that out in an email to everybody. Uh, we will open up the gates, and it's pretty much just the same Saturday or Sunday check-in condensed into to Monday morning. We go Monday morning as check-in, swim checks, everything, everybody into camp, into their campsites. We go into lunch. Right after lunch, we go into our leaders meeting and SPL meeting. Um, we will try to do our best to condense. For those that have been there before, you know that our leaders' meeting is almost an hour, if not longer sometimes. So we will do our best to condense that leaders' meeting into as li little amount of time as humanly possible while still getting all the information to you guys. Um, and then Monday afternoon, we're, we're changing it around a little. We're actually going to have um, 
all of our morning marathon sessions will be condensed into that Monday afternoon at half hour sessions. So the, the nine o'clock class that usually happens Monday morning would then be from two to two thirty. Um, and it'll go that way. Don't worry, we will be publishing a schedule for everybody so you don't get confused and lost. We're doing that because we find that we, we, for that week we would go over to Saturday, and Saturday was really confusing because everybody wants to leave, and we still have some merit badges going on. Um, so we've kind of figured out if we can do that half-hour section on Monday, we should be able to get everybody through normal merit badges by Friday. Um, and really what it is is that first session, one of the longest things on the first day of class is checking roll, making sure all the scouts are there and adding names. So we're going to be doing that right away. And then every merit badge nowadays has that first number one requirement about first aid and how it applies to that merit badge. So we'll also be going through that on that first day. And then the rest of the week kind of catches it back up to where the merit badge class is. Um, but, of course, uh, if we need to, we'll also run a, a little bit on Saturday if, you know, scouts didn't complete something before that. Um, we're trying to help you guys uh, get, those, get those taken care of. So that is a little bit of a change for that week to Monday. I know it's going to be very hectic. Um, for those that may ask, yes, we still will have a campfire Monday night uh, just like normal. Um, so we try to condense everything we do on Sunday into Monday. So Monday will be a nice great morning and afternoon and all your scouts and your leaders will want to go to bed by the time everything's over because you will be tired um, which is always a good thing so uh, that's kind of how that one will work otherwise the rest of the schedule for week two is pretty much the same um, and, and it's there for you guys um, moving on to the next page we have the what to bring list for the troop uh, so kind of just outlines some of the, the troop gear that we find uh, that people want um, for those that have been to our other, our other camp on Catalina Island, you may know that, unfortunately, because you're traveling on a boat, they don't allow propane and propane stoves. That you can perfectly, perfectly find to bring to camp. Um, I know when I was growing up, my troop would bring up the propane stove, so if we wanted hot chocolate first thing in the morning before we went to breakfast, we could have it. Or if the leaders wanted coffee and didn't want to walk all the way to the big top, they had it. Um, so, yes, you can bring propane stoves and propane lanterns. Um, with you as well. So that kind of goes, otherwise it kind of goes into, you know, patrol flag, troop flags, if you guys want to bring them. Uh, just a general first aid kit is always nice to have. Um, you know, stuff for games and whatnot if you want to, you know, little time in your campsites. Uh, probably one of the biggest thing on that list is some type of bear canister or bear bag supplies. Um, we have had bears in camp. Uh, for those that have been up in the last two years, you know that they have been around since pretty much week one. Because of the dry weather that had been up there, the bears that usually come in towards the end of the summer would come in towards the beginning. Um, they're very gentle and nice bears. They just want the food, and when they find it really easily in a kid's tent, they'll take it. Um, if it's you know in a bear canister, they may throw the canister around, but they're, you know, they don't get into them. The bear bags, they don't go after. They're looking for the easy pickings because they know that there's dumpsters and they know that there's public campgrounds around that people don't always think, hey, this is bear area, uh, so, so be aware of that. Um, the one thing I do recommend for bear canister, uh, get some nice neon paint and paint. You don't have to paint the whole container, but give it a stripe or end. That way, you know, we learned that when I used to backpack a lot in bear country. Um, Sometimes you may find your bear canister uh, in the next campsite, and with that neon paint, it's really easy to find a black container because most bear canisters seem to be black. <laughs> so, yes? Do they need to put like, all their smell in like, like their um, space and everything every night? We, we do recommend that um, just to be on the safe side. And pretty much we, every week when we have our leaders meeting, we'll let you know how the bears are doing, if we have seen them yet or not. Um, we do recommend, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing we do say is try to avoid um, leaving too much in, in your cars. We used to say cars were safe. Um, unfortunately, last year that was not the case, and one or two leaders lost a window um, during the week. We're pretty sure it was because they left the windows cracked, and the bear just kind of could smell through the cracked window and pulled out the, the glass of the window. Um, but we are, are being mindful of that. So bear container, uh, bear bag. Bear bags are really simple. Bring some rope, um, and you can use your sleeping bag stuff sack. That's what I used to use when I was camping a lot was I just bring uh, 100 feet of rope and my stuff sack and throw all my stuff in there and hoist it up a tree. 
So it's very simple, uh, but some type of bear canister is good, and, and I would recommend putting the smellables in just to be on the safe side. So. Are there bear boxes in there? We don't have bear boxes in the campsites. We kind of feel we've thrown it back and forth, and it's just like we don't have trash cans in the campsites because all the critters know what a trash can looks like, and they attack them even when there's nothing in them. You'll see that if we leave a trash can open at the beginning of the week, or not at the beginning of the week, when nobody's there, um, even if when the bag is empty or there is no bag, we see squirrels jumping into them. And we've kind of had, the, we've tested some bear things and we've kind of seen the same thing, that animals start to learn what that thing is and thinks, ooh, there could be food in there. And then even when there's nothing, they cause mayhem in there. I know you're just joining us. There's actually some chairs outside if you want to bring one in. And on the counter is a leader's guide that we're going through right now. So, um, yeah, so kind of just going, going into that. Uh, any other questions about that? Great. Um, okay, and then it just goes into some other basic what to brings list. The next page kind of goes into that, but it goes more in depth into the what your scout should bring uh, with them to camp and kind of gives some sample numbers. Yes. Um, they do need a fishing license if they are, was it 15, 16 and older? 16 and older, you do need a fishing license if they're going to fish. Um, the lake that we have and the rivers are still public land, even though the camp itself is on private property. Um, we haven't seen fishing game in the last few years going down the river checking, but I do recommend uh, you know, bringing it up. I think you can do it online nowadays. So uh, we don't sell them in camp. Um, we don't have that set up. But you, know, you can get them at any of your local sports stores. Uh, there's the last kind of little mini mart with a gas station in Kernville, which is about 45 minutes to camp, uh, known as the James Store. No, it's not James Store now. It's Sierra Gateway. Um, they do sell them as well. Uh, so um, they are there. So if you do have scouts that are over 16 or over that do plan on fishing for the, either the fishing merit badge or fly fishing merit badge, um, they, it is recommended and needed to have a fishing license for it. Um, they are more than, you know, if they have their own tackle, great, have them bring it up. If they don't, that's perfectly fine. We do have fishing poles uh, for both regular fishing and fly fishing that we will rent out uh, throughout the week. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, this goes just through all of the simple, don't forget your toothpaste and, and toothbrush and shirts and socks and underwear. We give some counts for some of those things. Um, we, know, we, we, we really urge the scout to change their socks every day. We understand it doesn't always happen. But, you know, if they bring five or six pairs, maybe they'll use three of them. So, <laughs> what <did you> say? <laughs> so yes, I, I once was a young scout and thought I didn't have to change my socks. And then I started getting cold at night when I wore my socks to bed, and I, I figured out why finally. Uh, so it just kind of gives you a sample. Um, uh, what to bring. And we understand that you guys, as your troops, you've been going to camps for a while and you kind of have added your own what to bring list. That's perfectly fine. Um, you can look at this list, look at your list, and see what they, if they have and don't have. Um, so. Yes. 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 Yep. Camp gas, propane, any type of that fuel for a stove or whatever, that's more than welcome to bring it. Yep. Yep. The nice thing is because you guys are driving yourselves and you're not getting on a boat, we don't have as many restrictions on what you can and can't bring in those, in those forms. Uh, unfortunately, when getting on a boat, they, they have more restrictions on that. So, yes? So we drive up to the campsite to drop off gear? We will go over that in just a couple minutes here. That, we, we will go over that. Don't worry. Actually, that's on the next couple pages. Um, when we turn the page, there's the list of things to, to leave at home. Um, so you can kind of see that as well. Uh, and then under that, uh, special instructions, um, this has kind of been back and forth. I wanted to kind of clarify uh, the unit insurance. Um, what that unit insurance is the secondary health insurance. Um, so all, all units should have uh, secondary health insurance. Almost all of them are usually through either um, your local council or if you're in case of an LDS unit, it would be through your local church. Um, what we ask is that you get a copy of that and you, you have two copies, one that you can give to us and then one that you keep in your own records. And these are basically used in case a scout needs to go down the hill. Um, we will then hand them the secondary health insurance uh, if some, you know, so that they, they have extra insurance on top of their normal medical insurance. Um, if you are a Western Los Angeles County Council troop, 
uh, you do not need to bring that. We already have you guys covered. Um, and it can be as simple as just a letter from your office saying, yes, we have secondary insurance. Here's the number. Um, it doesn't have to be on a huge form. Just a simple yes, here it is, uh, is, is more than fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, so just bring that, two copies, one to give to us in the office, and you'll be turning that in the, into the trading post when you do your check-in with all your permission slips, and then one copy to just keep for your own records. Um, any questions about that? I know in the past it's been kind of, wait, what is this? And so in there I've tried to spell it out a little more so everybody understands what we're asking for um, and that. Yes? Where did you say um, that you get this from? Um, you can call or email your local council office okay. and they should be able to help you out or at least direct you to the person. That <coughs> um, okay. um, so departure and arrival information. Um, those are out of order but well, that's fine. Uh, so. We, we basically, Sunday is our coming into camp day, and this is where I'm going to answer your question about the cars in camp. Um, Sunday is, is for most of the week the normal time. Uh, you will come to camp. Um, we open our gates at 1, 1 p.m., so that is when our gate will open and we let you guys into camp. The way that's going to work is you're going to drive into camp. We have an upper parking lot, a dirt parking lot, and you will see a picnic bench and a whole bunch of staff ready to mob you guys when you get into camp. Don't worry, they're nice and friendly and we all love each other. Um, they will basically give you a staff member known as a troop guide, and that person will be showing you around camp for that day. They will take you through the round rob and show you to your campsite. So what you do is you will drive down to the lower parking lot, we'll park uh, your cars. We do allow one car per unit to the campsite at a time. Um, what we usually recommend uh, is throw all your kids out of the car, uh, throw all the gear into one car, and then you can take it all in once. You don't have to do that. We highly recommend it, um, but you do not have to do that. You can just take one car, wait for it to unload, bring it back to the parking lot, take the next car. It may take a little bit of time. So we do recommend you know, just telling your kids uh, to get out of the car, throw everything in one car, and drive it in. Um, it will save you guys time. Uh, and so you will drive towards the camp. You can't get into campsites. You're going to be kind of parked off the side of the road. Um, in the case of being across the lake, you'll park over by our dam and walk across. So there will be some walking of gear uh, across or to your campsite. You can't drive straight into the campsite. But your, your troop guide knows where to park and they will have you park off to the side so you're not blocking the road. Um, there you will unload your, your, your stuff into your campsite. Um, and usually what we, we highly recommend is don't tell, you know, don't have your scouts worry about, you know, where they're going to be the whole time and start setting up their sleeping bag and everything. We want to get them through check-in as quick as possible. So we usually ask them to just hop into their swim trunks um, and then have your leaders have the paperwork. Uh, we, we ask that the paperwork is split into two piles. One pile is all the medical forms that will go through the medical recheck. So that's going to be one pile with one leader. The other pile is going to be all of the other forms. There's a permission to shoot form. Uh, there's some chairs right there on the outside. You can take one and, and have a seat. Unless you want to stand for an hour and a half. I don't, I don't think you do. So, um, so yeah, so the other leader will have those permission to shoots uh, and those forms uh, along with the insurance information we were just talking about. And there's a, another form we'll see a little later known as the uh, troop roster um, that you will also turn in. You'll take those, you'll turn those into that, to that leader at the trading post. The leader at the trading post is going to get some other information. They're going to get wristbands. Um, we do have everybody in camp wear a, a paper wristband around them all week, including the adults. Um, and we use that just so we know who's in camp because we do have some public land around us and sometimes we get visitors from those public campsites. Um, so we use the, the wristband. Don't worry if they fall off, we have more to give out. So we, we understand that kids can be kind of rough on a wristband and, and we, they break them. So, uh, so they'll get that. They'll also get the lay down, the rundown of the rest of that day in a nice little half sheet of paper that says this time, this time, this time, and this time are all these things going on. Because we understand check-in is going to be very hectic. Um, so from one to three, uh, we try to ask you to get in between those times so we can get you through the check-in because they're going to be going to the health lodge to get their medical forms looked at and rechecked and, and taken a look. Uh, and then give me one second here. And then they're going to be going through uh, swim checks. Um, along with around robins. So they're going to go to a couple of the program areas and get talks from the different 
uh, area directors about what their area does, what some free time activities are, and schedules and that kind of stuff. Um, ending at the big top where you'll get the big top talk of how to, you know, where's the food, where's the salad bars, where's the water, um, all those kind of things. You had a question? Uh, when they talk about the single car, does it have to be the same car? Because no. we're probably going to come four or five cars. One car goes in, yeah. it comes out, another car can go. Yes, in. yes. So okay. talking about that, the cars going in and out, it's just one car in at a time. So if you're going to do it that way, we'll bring the one car in, they'll unload, they'll go back to the parking lot, they will then, the next person in the car lineup will then go into the campsite. Yes? What about troop trailers? Trailers, unfortunately, also need to stay in the parking lot, um, and it is, it is on there. Uh, so you can take the trailer in, unload it, but the trailer does need to live in the parking lot, and that is coming uh, from the Forest Service. Uh, they do want the trailers to be in the designated parking lots as well. Uh, in the parking lot, when you park your car, you're actually also going to be parking, uh, you're backing into the spot. Um, that way, in case of an emergency, everyone can get out in a, in a quick and orderly fashion. And that, that again, is coming from the Forest Service. Yes? Uh, you did a real good job on the schedule. You have the second day for the Monday arrival folks, but here you don't have a Monday arrival sheet. Can you? I will you put one, one together. One yes, I will put one together, and it'll actually go in here uh, as that just. Thank you for that. Thank you. Like I, like I mentioned, we'll find more things throughout this packet, and it's always workable. We also have a misspelling on one of the, uh, right here, we're on Thursday, on the campus, the daily schedule, it says it's B-E-A-R run. Should that be B-E-E-R? <laughs> it's, it's the bear run, <laughs> running away from the bear. I'm just being a girl smart now. Yep. That's nice. Um, so, kind of just going off the rest of your, your Sunday arrival, you'll get into your campsites. We then have dinner. Um, we do uh, require that scouts wear their Class A, oh, not Class A, sorry, it is now field uniform. Yes, field uniform. I grew up when it was still Class A and Class B uniform, so we ask that they wear their Class A uniform for dinners. They don't have to wear them for <coughs> breakfast or lunch. Um, a, a activity uniform is perfectly fine for breakfast and lunch, and that is because we understand they're going to go to breakfast and then go straight to the classes, or pretty quick. You'll see our staff wearing the, their staff uniform for breakfast and lunch and not the field uniform. So we ask that they do wear their scout uniform for dinner. The one exception to that is Sunday, because we do want, we understand it's very busy, so if you don't have enough time after the swim checks and the round robins to get back to camp, and then get back to the dining hall in a timely manner. Don't worry about the class A or the, the field uniform for that day. Um, we, we'd rather you guys get to having some food after all that stuff than being properly dressed for, for dinner. So that is perfectly fine on that one. I had a question, yes? Well, checking in, you still have to wear the steel uniform, but prepare uh, the swing trunk. You're, you're, you're checking, um, so when you're driving, uh, you know, BSA asks the uniform, once you get to camp, no, you don't have to wear the, the Class A or the, the field uniform. You can go into whatever activity, shirt, and swim trunks. So they, um, I know some troops will actually drive up in swim trunks. It, it's up to them, um, but you don't need it once you get into camp. And another question over here? Oh, okay. Um, so after, you know, so we'll have dinner at 5, starting at 5.30. After dinner, we'll have our f uh, fire drill. We'll have everyone gather at the, the parade ground, which is right in front of the dining hall. Um, and we will then go into uh, some t quick announcements, the fire drill, and then disperse um, back to campsites. We'll have a leaders meeting under the big top at 7, where we will go over another nice long page and a half information about camp um, and then we also will have an SPL meeting for the SPLs to go to and get more information um, about what's going on throughout the week uh, after that we'll then have our campfire um, and then after campfire you guys are dismissed and free to relax in camp um, so like I said Sunday is going to be nice busy moving around uh, so just kind of be prepared for that um, questions? yes so um, 
not not having been to Whitsit, are there campfires allowed in each of the individual sites? Yes, okay. as of as of now, um, there are camp, campfires allowed in, in in the sites. If it changes, we'll obviously email you out beforehand, and then we'll let you know throughout the check-in process. Uh, last year, we did have some restrictions towards the end of the summer because of high fire. We don't expect those this year. The winter has been better than the last couple of years, um, so we don't expect that issue uh, at this point. Um, yes? If, um, if campfires are allowed throughout the summer, do we need to bring our own firewood? Then? Nope, nope. You can use the firewood that's in camp. Sometimes some troops will leave some firewood in campsites. Um, or you can just go around camp and take any dead fall off, off the ground. Um, we, don't, we ask that you don't take living things uh, because one, it was living, and two, when you put it into your campfire, it's now going to be really smoky and you'll smoke your, your scouts out of camp. Um, so a couple of reminders on, on, on check-in just in general. Uh, like I said, one vehicle in the, or towards the campsite at a time. Um, the other one, a lunch is not provided on Sunday, so just kind of make that aware. Some troops stop in Kernville for lunch on the way up. Uh, Lake Isabella is another location that has two fast food restaurants, actually more than two. Um, so there's another location if you want fast food. There's some diners and stuff in Kernville, um, which are great to eat at. Um, and then the last thing we do ask is to make sure you share all this information with your, your, your parents in your troop. Um, we get lots of emails and lots of phone calls every day between myself and uh, our camping registrar, Jonathan. We're pretty much nonstop on the phones. Um, and sometimes that is a parent who didn't know the information that's now currently going to be out there. So we ask, share it with them. You can email this packet out. It, you know, it does say Leader's Guide. We don't care. Anybody can read it. It's on our website in a, in a locatable spot. Um, there's uh, chairs right outside if you would like to grab one so you don't have to stand. Uh, so make sure you disperse this information out. Um, we're always happy to answer questions and calls. But you know, if, you, if their parents already know that it's out there and, and you talk to them about it, that hopefully will help uh, tune down the amount of emails and phone calls. Because as we get closer to summer, it gets busier and it's harder to return calls. Yes? Um, I looked at the website, I couldn't find it. Uh, one of the adult leaders from my uh, unit that are, that's attending wants to know, is there Wi-Fi service at the camp or yes. phone service? Yes. There is no cell service in camp. Uh, unfortunately, there, there's no cell service. The closest cell service is about 45 minutes away in Kernville. So Kernville is the closest little town, and that's the closest location for cell service. Um, we are happy to, to, to let you guys know that we do have uh, Wi-Fi at camp this summer. Um, we are going to, it's going to be a, a purchase usage. So we do have two computers in our business office for Scoutmasters to come and use at their leisure to fix merit badge changes or quickly check um, email to, to let your leader to let all the parents know that everybody's fine and having a great time. Um, you are more than welcome to bring up your own computer and or you can use your phone if you like. And we do we will be selling Wi-Fi. It's twelve dollars per gig. Um, so we do sell it as a, in, a, in a gig rate. Uh, if you use up your full gig, that's fine. You can buy another gig um, throughout that. We also do recommend making sure that auto updates are turned off and auto uploads are turned off so it doesn't accidentally, you know, as soon as you plug your phone into the Wi-Fi or your computer in the Wi-Fi, it doesn't download everything and, and go through your gig. And we find that most uh, leaders, uh, as long as those are turned off, a gig is more than enough for them throughout the week. So we do have Wi-Fi at camp. That is a new thing. Um, we introduced it the middle of last summer, um, and last summer was kind of our test run, and, and it seemed to do great, uh, so it, it will be available this summer. One note with that is it is still on satellite internet, so it will be a little bit slower than your DSL or cable connections that you're used to at home. So do bear with that. It will be slower but it is usable, and it's actually a lot faster than it was two years ago. Uh, I can now click on a web page, and it takes about a minute to load instead of two or three minutes to load. Great. <laughs> so a question. What's the coverage The coverage is going to be the trading post and the big top. So it's in that radius there. Another question over here? OK. And I will add that into this. Uh, I remembered that, like I said, there was a couple things I caught after I printed. Um, so it will be added into this guide for you guys. Yes? Only the leaders have ability. Adult leaders only, no boys. We will, we will not sell it to the boys. It, 
they could be sneaky. It won't make a difference because our Wi-Fi is MAC addressed. So when you give us, when you go to the, you're going to buy it from the trading post. They're going to give you a form, and we're going to ask you to put your MAC address on there. We also give you a password because it's a dual system. But even if they have the password, they can't do anything um, because their MAC address is not in there. So we will not sell it to any boy leaders in the troop or any boys in general. It is only for the adult leaders. Yes? So is that, if you have the MAC address, you put more than one, so could our leaders, the five leaders, could we share that? I know we can do at least two, maybe three. There is some limits to our system of what we can do. Share you could share a little. And just as a side note, it's still one gig. So if you're having two or three leaders on it, yeah. but yeah. Um, so it is, it is something people have been asking for, and we finally found an infrastructure that could support the, the heavy load. We, we finally last year got a new Internet provider that could actually give us a good, a good thing at camp. Um, so a lot better than what it used to be. Give me a second. Um, any other questions? Camp laptops? Those are for anybody to use? They're, they're desktops, but, yeah, they're for any leaders. Again, we will... Yeah, just to send up updates. So those are f available free of use for anybody that wants to use them. That is perfectly fine. We do understand that sometimes a leader wants to use their own computer or phone, um, and we can help with that with, uh, with purchasing Internet. So uh, it is a new thing. Let your leaders know. Um, uh, we, we definitely do have that available now. So any other questions with that? Yes. So any other questions with that? Yes. Oh, uh, bicycles you have a Huh? Bicycles? Uh, no, and we'll go over that oh. when we get to, to that section. Okay, any other questions with that? Okay. Actually, we already passed the to bring section. So, um, no, uh, bicycles, you can bring them, but they can only be taken on one of our bike rides. We don't allow bikes to be ridden throughout general camp. Our, unfortunately, a lot of our trails are small, and they really can't hold with bikes and bikes going in two directions plus walkers. We, we don't have the trails for that. Um, so they can be brought to camp and left so you can take them out on one of, your, uh, one of our bike rides. Um, but otherwise, we don't allow them to be ridden throughout the camp. We do have bikes for the bike rides, so you don't have to bring bikes if you don't want to. Um, if someone does bring a bike, they do need to have a helmet. Um, we do follow all BSA guidelines, so every person on a bike, uh, whether it's an adult or a youth, does have to wear a helmet while riding that bike. Um, so we do go over that. What about for the cycling path or the high ventures? If they would like to bring their bike for the cycling trip, that is more than fine. Uh, we do have bikes that they can use for that as well, but if they have their own that they're really good with and they like it and they don't want to be without it for that trip, that is perfectly fine. And helmets, do we, do they bring their own for the high Um, the If they have them, they, you know, we want mountain bike style helmets. If they have them, great. Uh, if not, we do have the helmets as well. Um, the skateboarder round helmets, they really don't work for, for our, our usage. Okay. So, but it, we do, we can provide those as well. Telephone. Question? Um, the, the bikes that you've got, mm -hmm. what, what kind of bikes are they? They, most of them are um, 21 speed. Uh, they vary between giants and uh, specialized, um, and we range sizes of a 16-inch frame up to a 21-inch frame, uh, usually going in even numbers until 21. Um, so. Are they rock hoppers, stump, stump jumpers? No, know? no. They're, they're general mountain bikes. Okay. So they're, they're giants, they're general mountain bikes uh, with Almost, we have a no, small amount with disc. The name of the model first. Oh, the, I, I, no. The specialized are the really old bikes, and those are our small bikes. So the 16 inch frames that we have are specialized. They are probably six or seven years old at this point. So they're, they're very basic um, for that. Um, Question? Yes. You mentioned Big Top a lot. I have never been to Camp Wits at all. Big years. Top is what our is dining hall. Okay. It, the reason we call it a Big Top is it is a big, giant, white and yellow circus tent uh, put up over a concrete pad. It is attached to our business office, kitchen, commissary building. It is pretty much the central location of camp. Um, so you'll see it on the map. It is labeled the Big Top. And that's what it is. It's a big giant circus tent where everybody's going to eat under. So that's why we call it that. So um, and pretty much as soon as you get to about the trading post, you'll see it. It's, it's very big and noticeable. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to miss. Um, so, moving on to the next page, we have our directions on how to get to camp. 
whether you're coming from the south or north, they are there for you guys. Um, we do, you, you can use Google Maps. Uh, we fished Google Maps about four years ago, so it does get you, if you type in Camp Witsit, it does get you to Camp Witsit, not to Kernville. It will get you to camp uh, without a problem. The one thing you may notice if you pull up Google Maps and you go into Earth and you zoom into camp, um, it looks like we have no lake. That is a lie. Uh, we drain our lake every winter. So every winter, because it is a man-made lake with a dam, we drain it every winter. And then we fill it in the spring. Um, so we do have a lake. Uh, I actually heard from my ranger that he closed it last week and it was full within 24 hours, which we like to hear because last year it took about a week and a half to get it full. So it is showing that there is a lot more water flow uh, up there this summer. Um, so yes, if you go into Google Maps and you go into Google Earth View and you zoom into camp and you see a big dry circle next to what looks like sand, that is our lake. Um, unfortunately, like I said, over the winter we, we close it down. And so the aerial picture that they took at that point was during the winter. We are trying to work with, with Google on getting that fixed. If anybody has a really good contact in that division of Google, let me know. I'd love to talk to you guys. We thought we had some contacts and they, yeah, I know, right? If you pay for it, they'll do whatever you want. <laughs> it's really yes, easy. yes, uh, understand. Yes? Can the scouts clean and eat a fish if they're taking the merit badge? Yes, they can. So uh, if they're taking the merit badge, they can clean and eat a fish um, at camp. So the fish is stocked. The lake is stocked. Uh, so we get, there's a local hatchery in Kernville, and they come up once to, one to two times uh, the year to stock the lake. Um, so, yes? What kind of weather would it be? The weather? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, so you, you can, there will be, yeah, there will be a link <laughs> on, our, there will be a weather update on our website. We're putting that new one together right now. Because uh, if you look at Kernville, we're usually about, five to 10 degrees cooler than Kernville. Uh, the camp is kind of in its own little microclimate, so it is about five to 10 degrees cooler. Um, average, the days can be anywhere from like 85 to 100. Uh, uh, for the highs, the lows can be anywhere from high 50s to, to mid 40s. Um, so it, it does vary. Uh, like I said, we're going to be putting the new widget on our, our website with the weather, so you can kind of take a look at that uh, throughout you know, usually we say look at, start looking at it about a week before you come, so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like for that week. Um, Do you generally have thunderstorms up there that time of year? Hit or miss. <laughs> I mean, hit, last year we were up in Big Bear, right? Yeah. We, if we get rain, we did get some last year. It was for about two days, three days, and then it was kind of lingering clouds for the rest of the week. So we, there is the possibility. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. All right, and we do if, you know, we do, we'll go over it if it does rain, but if it rains and the kid's sleeping bag gets wet, let us know. We have some wet dryers that we can dry them out in so they're not stuck sleeping in a wet sleeping bag because we all know that is a horrible thing to do. Um, so yes, if it does rain, we'll, and we'll go over it at camp as it happens, we do have dryers to help dry out sleeping bags if they get wet. Um, turning the page on the other side of the directions is kind of just an aerial, very basic map view from you know, where camp is from uh, Lake Isabella and um, uh, Johnsondale, which is kind of the last big landmark before you go into camp because it's about three miles from the camp. Uh, moving on to the next page is our special needs uh, stuff. Um, we understand that whether, you know, you put your registration in a while ago and now you found out that one of your leaders needs a CPAP or um, has trouble walking, those kind of things, that's perfectly fine. Um, go to this link, uh, click on it, fill out the form, let us know what you need, and we will accommodate you. We, can, we do have some campsites with electricity, so if they have a CPAP that they need electricity for, we can help with that, or if they need to charge a wheelchair, we can help with that. It's just, we would like to know beforehand and not <coughs> as soon as they come to camp. So I know right now you guys are filling out your rosters and you know who's coming and what some of those special needs are going to be. Go ahead, fill out that form. Uh, the same thing, if you have special dietary needs, let us know, um, and we will help work with you on that. We kind of below the special needs is our, our food allergies and special diets, and that kind of lists what we can do really easily in the kitchen. If there's something a little more, we'll talk with you, and it may be that we you bring some extra food to substitute some of the meals with. 
Um, that is fine. We can even store it in our in our commissary so you don't have to worry about keeping it on ice all week. We will help you store it and then help uh, prep it for your scout or leader, whoever needs it. Um, yes, right here. Sorry. Um, now, I have some that have special diet needs but are also doing the high adventure cycling. So how does that work? You will email me. Okay. <coughs> email me so we can start working that out now. Okay. Yes. Um, about two weeks before, can we email and get the menu like usual? Yes. Okay, and then last time we brought up like an ice chest and just held our stuff in there. You guys kept it back in the back. We, we, will, we will do that. Okay. So yes, for those that need... The beers. The need to bring up special food uh, for scouts, we will, like like I said, we will um, throw it in our fridges or in the dry storage, depending on what it is, and we'll keep it separate, uh, label it so we know it's their food and where it's at. Um, so we, we do our best to accommodate. I know one of the biggest things people say is peanuts. Um, we pretty much run a peanut-free kitchen. The only place you will see peanuts in our food is if you go on, if you take a sack lunch. If you use any sack lunch, whether it's for a, a lunchtime bike ride, excluding the, the Sierra Trek section, um, if it's a lunchtime bike ride or you're going whitewater and you want a sack lunch, they are peanut butter, uh, peanut butter and jelly uncrustable sandwiches. So just let us know as you fill out the form to request lunch and we will make some other lunch uh, for that scout that needs it. And if they are very, very allergic to the whole troop can't eat peanut butter, that's fine. Let us know when you fill out that request form and we will make lunch for everybody. It'll usually be a cold cut sandwich um, for everybody. Uh, so that is the only location that there is peanut butter uh, in, in camp um, or in our kitchen. So, oh, minus the trading post, they have some Snickers, I know have peanut butter or peanuts. Uh, so, but for our kitchen, or for our kitchen purposes, it is a peanut free kitchen, yes. Peanut free or nut free? Um, the biggest one is peanuts. Uh, I think a couple of things have like almonds or walnuts and oh. the, the trail mix type stuff. But otherwise, we, we pretty much stay away from all. Okay. You have a specific one, your, your question? My son's is allergic to all nuts. All nuts, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and really, if it's that, it's usually on the salad bar itself and not in the food. So, we don't okay. put any peanut based, any nut based products in our food. Um, but if you if you want, we can chat uh, later on, or I can give you over to my uh, uh, kitchen head kitchen facility guy, and he'll be able to go over that with you as well. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And moving on to the next one, uh, required forms. Um, so I know that's a question that some people ask. Uh, the, the biggest the, the biggest one is the, the BSA health medical form um, with parts A, B, and C. Because you're gonna be there more than 72 hours, you are required to have part C. Please let your scouts know now so they can start making their appointments. Because if their doctor is anything like mine, I pretty much need to call within the next week to get an appointment for May. Um, I last year kind of forgot and they had to secretly rush me in so I can get it done. But I will be making a phone call next week. I have a reminder on my phone for that uh, so that I could get in within time. So let your scouts know that uh, they do need to have a, a valid BSA medical form. And what I mean by valid, it has to be within a year of the last medical form. Um, and it's a year to the end of that month. It kind of, uh, there's always been question about that. I found the actual wording from National that I have put in there. Um, so it says a qualifier, a form qualifies as valid through the end of the 12th month from the date it was administered uh, by the medical provider with the date at the bottom. Um, the example here is if they went to uh, the, get their medical in March 3rd of 2015, it is still good until the end of March, so March 31st, 2016. Um, so that is there. Their medical form must be valid for the full week of their time at camp. Okay, it must be valid for the full week at the time of their camp uh, for the medical form to be valid with the current uh, doctor's signature on it for 2015 uh, or 16, depending on when they got their form. Um, I'm hoping this little line here helps you, it helps your parents understand what a uh, valid medical form means. So for mo most people, if they got it in 2016, or they got their medical form in June, whatever, of 2015, it is still good until the end of June of 2016. So for some parents, it, your, for their form may still be good from summer camp from last year. Um, but that is what National says is a valid form. We do ask that you go online uh, 
And basically, this link here will, the medical form link will direct you to national site to download the most current medical form. We do ask that you use that. I believe at this point it was revised in 2014. Yeah. So they haven't revised it in a few years, um, but we do ask that they use whatever the current medical form is from, from the BSA. Uh, and that is for both uh, youth and adults. Um, there is a um, proliferation of little clinics that also do camp physical, yep. especially if it's one where the you know, insurance only covers one physical year at the time, right? So CDS is minute clinics, they're like 59 bucks. There's a place called MedPost in LaSalle that's only $25 for camp physicals. Okay. So yeah, and there's, there's a lot of... Just look at camp physicals near me on Google and you'll find it. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, a lot of places, and if, if they do a sports physical, then they do a camp physical. So sometimes they may not show up as camp, but if there's a, if it says sports physical, they will do the camp one too, and, and a lot of places do it. Um, so just kind of going over uh, that as well. Um, the other form that's on here, and it will be linked to our website. It's not in the guide because uh, we're trying to save some paper, um, but it is on the website. Is the There's one for adults and there's one for youth, and that is the youth and adult permission forms. Uh, for the youth, it's permission to shoot, permission for full program, um, and, and those kind of things. For the adult, it's here's all the rules that I'm agreeing to follow as an adult and, and, and going in that form. Uh, so they are there. They do need to have signatures on them and brought to camp and check in. For the permission to shoot, it's the very first part on the form. The, the youth form is three pages, um, and it's parts A, B, C, and D. Uh, the adult form is just a two-page with the back page being the signature page. The front page is just wording. Um, and uh, they do have to have those. If a, a scout, uh, if a parent doesn't want their scout to shoot, that's fine. They can just cross it out saying no shoot um, on the form. So, and if there is no signature for that, we pretty much will not let them shoot anyways. It is California law that every minor has permission to shoot from their legal guardian. Um, so uh, please, please try to push that. Every year we always have one or two scouts that, that somehow is missed. Um, and we'll work with the adult leaders up there to get the form filled out if needed, but it will save everybody some time and trouble uh, if you have them beforehand. Um, so, and to help with that, on the back, the next page is our camp attendance roster. Before you ask, yes, there is an editable version on our website. Uh, we have both a fillable PDF, and for those that love Excel, we have the Excel version as well. Um, so yes, they are there on our website, so you can actually just pull that up, type it in. We ask that every leader brings this form um, filled out. Uh, we will collect this form at check-in, and it's to help us uh, answer some questions at the end of the year. Um, one of the big ones on there is it does ask about, um, where is it? Oh, there, ethnicity. Uh, it does ask about ethnicity. There's a chart at the bottom of what we're looking for, and that is because we are on Forest Service property, so every year, at the end of the year, usually around October, I have to fill out a survey for the Forest Service, letting them know how many kids came to camp and the breakdowns of ethnicity, um, because then they put their own report together to give to the government. So, yes. <laughs> Do your best to fill it out. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, please use this form. I do recommend filling it out beforehand. That way you don't have to sit there and write it in when you get there. Because we will have copies, and if you don't have it filled out, we will ask you to fill it out. Um, it also helps you because there are check boxes for your paperwork person to check off that, yes, you have all the medical forms for your boys, and yes, you have all of their permission to shoot for them, and it, it kind of helps you as well. We ask that you fill out as much information on here as possible. Um, we understand some people are really secretive about the ethnicity question. If you can't get that information from the parent, that's fine. We do ask to get as much information as possible because it does help us at the end of the year to re for our report to the Forest Service. So normal camp would be T? Yes. Okay. T is for traditional camp. Yes, you had a question. Yeah, I'm sure he's not getting it, but can you explain type to me? I don't hurt youth. Yes. Okay. Oh, A is for adult, <coughs> and Y is for youth, and I will put that somewhere on here. <laughs> Are you okay with us adding lines, or do you want a new sheet for every 20 kids? Um, you can add lines. So if you pull the Excel and you just add more lines, that's perfectly fine. 
uh, as that as well. Um, so yeah, because yes, we understand some troops, many troops are going to have more than 20. Uh, so multiple, you know, if it prints on two or three pages, that's perfectly fine as well. <laughs> I will have to do that. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, this form is on the website, so you can download it in PDF or Excel. You don't have to use the one from this guide for you guys. I'm sorry, yes, I stepped out. Um, so if we're marking a program is traditional merit badge, is, are we using this form also for high adventure? Yes, yes. So would we put, I don't see like for the cycling, I see intro to backcountry. Um, uh, is there a cycling important. one that we would indicate? I will, we'll make sure that gets added to the form. Um, and actually for high adventure, we do, if you, it makes it, our lives a little easier if you just put a different form together. So you have your high adventure form and then your okay. traditional form. It will make things easier. If they're doing the CPT program, you can add them to the normal form, that's fine. But in your guys' case, and you're doing the cycle trips, so just have a separate form. Okay. But I'll make sure that uh, cycle gets added. Okay. Okay. Any questions about that form? Great. Uh, moving on. Um, the very last page of this section is just a little general adult survey form. You fill it out, turn it in when you come to camp. Uh, it's not needed for every adult, but it just gives us an idea of the adults in camp, especially if there's an adult that has some specialties, um, like an electrician, or uh, they, you know, maybe a merit badge counselor, and they want to give some help throughout the week. Um, it's great to know that information, and we will we will definitely use that as 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 we need. Um, so you can fill this out, turn it in when you get to camp. Um, we don't need them for every adult. It's just another form we have if if you'd like to fill it out and turn it in. All right, questions about that section? Yes? So, um, campsites, how are they assigned? So that is a very good question. Campsites will be assigned usually the Friday before you come to camp. So you will find out sat Sunday when you come to camp. The reason we do this is we, we get troops that are changing numbers to the day they come to camp sometimes, and we want to make sure when assigning campsites, we have the most accurate numbers for that troop. So we will assign them the Friday beforehand, um, sometimes Saturday morning, uh, and you guys will find out on, on uh, Sunday when you arrive. So I know some people have emailed me over the last couple weeks asking about that. I'm going to tell you the same thing if you email me or call me about it. We will know the Friday or Saturday before you come because that is when we do our campsite assignments. We put it down so we can make sure we give everybody the right amount of campsites or tents that they need for their campsite. I had a question over here. Yes. Is there a cutoff uh, uh, about when, when no longer uh, science scouts up or is it? No. Um, we ask that if you know for sure you're going to add a boy at least a week before, but if something happens and a boy can come the day you guys are leaving, great. Um, we will definitely help accommodate that with no problems. So. The question right here. Um, the, are there specific ones that are the wilderness sites? Yes, if you look at the map, there are, it does specify wilderness sites versus tented sites. Um, the wilderness sites are uh, just a triangle that's not colored in, uh, and the tented sites are the triangles that are colored in. Um, we have this camp map on our website as a separate downloadable PDF file, so you can also get it there. Uh, and on that, it is colored. Um, so you, it will be a solid green tent is tented sites, and a, a um, non-solid green tent is a wilderness site. For those that may ask the next question, what's the difference between a tented site and a wilderness site? I do thank you for bringing that up, because um, we've a tented site is a site where we provide the typical Boy Scout wall, canvas wall tents on a wooden platform with two cots and mattresses in them. Uh, so that is a tented site. Um, it also has the picnic bench and a fire pit and water and that kind of stuff. A wilderness site is a campsite that doesn't have tents or cots or mats. It has the picnic bench and the campfire and the water. Um, so for those that were chose a wilderness site, it is the expectation that you are bringing your own tents. So please, if you're unsure of what you picked, um, check it. If you put wilderness and you actually wanted a tented site, uh, let us know now so we can get that fixed. About four years ago, before I became camp director, we had a troop that was unclear. They put down wilderness site and they didn't bring any tents. <laughs> Myself and my, my handy uh, sidekick commissioner at the time um, basically drove around in one of the camp vehicles 
taking a tent from this campsite and a tent from that campsite and finding a tent in our tent maintenance yard where we keep the extra tents and poles to put together a tented site for somebody who didn't realize they were in a non-tented site. So um, they ended up still sleeping on, we put, we didn't have wooden frames left, so they were on uh, ground cloths, but we were able to do it. Um, it took all day <laughs> because there are weeks where we are very, very packed to the point where that eh, we may have an extra tent here or there. Um, and so that's that one of those, that week was one of those really packed weeks and we had to find a tent here and there to put together a campsite. So please, if you're unsure of what campsite, look now, you, when you, whoever is your registered person in Double Knot, or whoever did the Double Knot registration, they can go on and it'll say uh, in council tented or in council wilderness or out of council tented or out of council wilderness. And that is how you know what type you are. Um, and like I said, if you are signed up for wilderness and you didn't realize it and you're expecting tents, let us know now and we'll change it. It's not a problem to change it. We have room in camp for tented sites so in all of our weeks so we can make the change. Um, it is easier to make the change now than when you get to camp. <laughs> so just to point that out, yes? Are the wilderness sites, can they accommodate 30, 40 tents? Yeah. We have some big wilderness sites and we have some small wilderness sites. So. Yes. You know, with the Chihuahua last year, one of the requirements is outside each tent they'd have like a number ten can with water and a stick in it. Do you have anything like that here? No, we. You know, you'll have you'll have your fire pit and yeah. well, if either a hose or we'll have a water bucket for you guys. And that's pretty much the the requirement is when you're using a fire, have that. But at the actual tents, no, we we don't have that because there are no fires allowed inside the tent. Along with, if you do bring, if you do bring propane uh, lanterns, we ask that you don't take those inside the tent either. Um, so we don't want any open flames in in the in the tents. So just to put that out there. Yes. For your tented sites, do you guys? Is there a picnic table? Is there any other stuff? Because like we brought a pop up last year to the camp that we went to. A lot of our camps have uh, some natural tree sh shaded areas but not all, um, so if you want to bring a pop-up, go for it to give yourself some shade. Um, our more sunny campsites will have uh, one or two awning style uh, covers, um, but if you have a big trip, you may want to bring an extra if everybody wants to sit under them. So, but only our, the, the campsites that we know for sure, there's about three of them that are <coughs> no trees around them or almost no trees and there's not a lot of uh, natural shade, we will have pop-ups there, but Campsites that we know have a lot of natural shade, we don't have them there. Uh, so if you would like to bring one, you're more than welcome to anyways. How about tables? They do have picnic benches in all of our campsites. So, uh, yes. In the back. Do we need to bring our own firewood? No. Uh, firewood you can take from the ground. So, yes, in the back. Drinking water. Um, all of our water, uh, out of any spigot in camp, is drinkable water. We actually run off a, a natural, um, or not a natural, but we run off a well. Um, and it is, if you've been to other camps, it is a very good drinking water from, from other camps. If you've been to our, our sister camp, Camp Emerald Bay, it is a lot better than Emerald Bay. Uh, a lot better than Emerald Bay. And we, you know, we go through... Huh? No, no. And we go through, our, our water goes through uh, regular government checks. So we're checking it uh, as, as deemed by the government once a month uh, through an agency. So. Uh, it is perfectly safe drinking water, and I drink it every day. Uh, like I said, I've been working there for 12 years. And I actually, I live in Santa Clarita. Um, the water up there is a lot better than the Santa Clarita water. So I actually get very sad when I come home at the end of the year and I have to drink Santa Clarita water again. Um, so yes, it is very safe and drinkable water. Uh, we do ask, you know, tell your scouts to bring a water bottle with them so they can fill up because they're going to be going all over the place. They're going to want a water bottle. Um, I had another question. Yes. Do we have to worry about mosquitoes? There are mosquitoes and bugs, so yeah, uh, repellents. Um, last year, last year they weren't too bad, right, Ethan? Mosquitoes. Okay. So yeah, they're not bad usually. Uh, for those, uh, that's Ethan. He's one of my senior directors at camp. Um, so you will see him this year. He also works next door at the scout shop in this building um, as well. So. Um, yes. Are water spigots in each campsite? There are water spigots in each campsite. Um, and then there's water spigots in all program areas, and then there's always drinking water in containers at our, our dining hall. 
Um, so there's pretty much water everywhere throughout camp. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna make a request. I um, we're just we're, we're getting we're running a little tight on time, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna have to roll pretty soon. That's fine. Uh, we have a lot of great questions, which I know I'll learn from. But is there any way you can maybe hold questions and get through the material so we okay. can get to stuff, and then maybe do a bunch of questioning afterwards? We can we can try to do that if I'd you can try miss, to hold your questions. I hate uh, to miss out on this stuff, but I'm gonna have to roll pretty soon. I understand. I understand. So we'll move on. Um, the next section is our leader or is, uh, training stuff. So the first page there is our uh, beaver training. It's kind of seen as the, the older boy um, pre-camp training. And what it is is you can send your, your couple of your boy leaders a week before your troop comes to camp. They're going to do some uh, general leadership training, how to run meetings, um, how to run activities, that kind of stuff. They're also going to learn a lot of what's going on at camp. And they're kind of intended, they'll have some time to take one or two merit badges that week. Um, because the intent is when they, when your troop comes to camp, they're helping the leaders out by maybe rushing some of the little younger scouts to one of their areas, um, or making sure they know who to sign up for on all the different, you know, bikes and, and Sentinel Peak hike and other activities that are going on throughout the week of camp. Um, so that is a, a, a program that you can you can take advantage of. Um, they can bring one, two, three boys. There's no limit on that. Uh, and that happens the week before uh, camp. So they'll be there one week earlier. And like I said, they'll get the opportunity to take a couple merit badges because the intent is when they're up there with your troop, they may not be taking all four merit badge sessions because they're helping get the boys to some of their, uh, their um, campsites, or not campsites, but uh, program areas. Um, moving on, uh, the next section is the individual awards. We have a, a two. Uh, here we kind of have the beaver award. It's kind of intended for their kids first time at camp um, So it's just very basic stuff uh, Complete a 30-minute service project um, There's one that says you know complete three of the following tie a basic knot uh, Think about a memory at camp and record it in our memory books that we have uh, those kind of things So it's very simple. It's intended for Brand new scouts and people that are first year the one after that the flying W is kind of intended for that second year kid coming to camp uh, and it's basically very similar to the beaver, it just adds on. So instead of a 30 minute service project, it's now an hour service project. Um, it may say complete two merit badges or stuff like that. So it's kind of that add on. Um, and it doesn't have to be their second year at Camp Witsit. It could be their second year at any camp. Um, yeah, it's kind of just that second year plus uh, for, for scouts. Um, the next award uh, is the patrol award, and that is intended to be done as a patrol. Um, so they will go together as a patrol to different program areas and doing program activities. Uh, each of them have games and stuff. They also, you know, we, we ask that they go to, um, you know, go to go bring their patrol flag, uh, sit as a patrol during meals, and go to go as a patrol to, to colors. Um, and that's kind of just another thing they don't have. Any of these awards that we're now talking about, they don't have to do. It's just an add-on because some people want to do more things at camp. So they're add-on uh, things. Um, so that's just an add-on. It is intended for a patrol. We understand that some troops are small, and they may have two patrols at home, but only one patrol worth of boys coming. That's fine. Merge them into one patrol. Give them a new patrol name for camp. Give them you know, the camp patrol leadership, and they're now a patrol for camp. It doesn't have to be the patrol from back home. Um, so... Uh, that is just, it's another thing they can do. Uh, all of those awards, um, if, you know, look at them now because the next award uh, will use some of those uh, in it. And that is the troop award. For that troop that wants to do more and, and have more fun, we have the troop award. It is, you pretty much will be working on it all week, and it does require everybody in the troop to participate. Uh, there's the requirements that uh, some of your boys, an X percent of your boys earn the, um, the Beaver Award, the Flying W Award, uh, that your adult leaders do some training and maybe earn the Adult Leader Award, which we'll talk about afterwards. Um, uh, you know, do all these activities. So it's broken out into different sections, and it says, you know, Section 3, uh, Troop Activities Complete 5 of the following, and it gives seven or eight things, which includes participating in Aqua Kid together, going up Sentinel Peak together, those kind of things. Um, at camp, you will actually get a scorecard that tells you who signs off for each of these items. Because some of them will be certain area directors, some of them will be your troop guide, some of them will be your commissioner, and some of them will just be yourself as the troop leadership. So it is intended to, to do with a little bit of everybody. Um, so moving on, 
So I mentioned the, the leader award, that is the next section. This award is just for you guys to have fun, because we understand you're bringing all these kids, and you're gonna be running around, we want you to also have fun, because if you don't have fun, why are you coming up um, with your boys? So this is just a very much for fun award. Uh, you don't have to do it, but you may end up doing it without even realizing it. Uh, some of it is, uh, you know, talk to a, a staff member for five minutes with suggestions or just anything you want to talk about. Uh, volunteer in an area. Um, uh, participate in a nap safely uh, event. Um, so it's those fun little things for you guys as adult leaders. I think there's one um, that's, you know, sit in your campsite for a while talking to your boys. You know, it's just that fun kind of stuff because we want you guys to have fun and we want you to stay active in the program because if it isn't for you guys in the program, um, there, there would be no prog program for the boys. So that's just the fun little thing for all of your adults. And like I said, those awards you don't have to do if you don't want to. Moving on the next two pages, um, the, some of the leaders here have already been talking about it. We do have some high adventure based uh, activities outside of the normal camp program, which is known as Sierra Expeditions. We do four programs out of that. Um, we do a, three of them are group based. So it's Sierra Cycle, Sierra Trek, and the horse pack, they're all group based. So you do have to have a group from your troop coming to do them. I can't, we can't have individual boys doing them by themselves. That group does need to have at least one leader um, coming with them. It's also, ventures are fine to go on those programs. If you have a co-adventure crew, they're more than welcome to come up um, to do those as well. And we understand you may already have plans. These are there every summer. So if you're, you can think in the future, two or three years down the line, these programs will be there and you can take advantage of them. Um, so like I said, there's Sierra Trek and Sierra Cycle. They're basically, we're taking you out backpacking. Um, we have backpacking trips out there, we take you guys out there. We provide a staff member as a guide, we will provide the food, we will provide all of the permitting things that you have to think about when you go on a long-term backpack trip like the fire permit or the wilderness, to, you know, wilderness permit to be in that campsite or whatever. We provide those kind of things um, for you guys. Uh, and we go very basic, we have an intro which is maybe you're only spending two days on the trail because at the beginning of the week we're teaching you how to backpack. We're teaching you about backpacking and what to pack and what not to pack and all that equipment stuff. And then you go out on the trail for a day or two to use that knowledge that you just learned out on the trail. So we can go very basic to very hard. Your scouts want to do 50 miles in a week. Um, so we can very much do those kind of things. A note with those, um, those is we are at a higher elevation than a lot of boys are used to. Um, so keep that in mind. We're at over 4,000 feet in elevation and some of the trails we're going to can be as high as 7,000 feet in elevation. Uh, so please make sure that anybody going on, interested in those trips are ready for those trips. Um, we had a, a, a group in the past that wasn't ready for it and they, they had to call it quits after a second day and we had to go pick them up. Um, and they weren't very happy. but. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. They, they, you know, they should be conditioned for these kind of trips. Uh, like, tr like Trek, we also have the cycling. It's the same concept. If you ever try to do a week-long cycling trip, you may know how much work it goes into it because you have to find a way to get your gear from point A to point B, and you may need a chase bike or chase car to fix a bike if it breaks. We take all of that thinking out of it for you guys. We get you on bikes. We have a big box trailer that we put all your gear in. You go from point A to point B. You put all your stuff in the trailer, it'll show up at point B with you guys um, throughout there. Uh, and again, that's another one that can go very easy to very hard. Um, it, is it is guided by a staff member, um, so we have those, those availabilities. The horse pack program is a whole different program. It is a week-long program of, of being on a horse. Um, we work with a third-party company. Uh, you will go to their, you will be out of camp all week. You will go to their pack station Monday morning bright and early and you will come back Friday afternoon uh, tired and dusty. Um, they pretty much put you on a horse day one, and you go from their main pack station to a little uh, outpost that they have. Uh, it's usually about a 10 mile ride on the first day. Um, you're out there and they're teaching you all about horses and, and pack trains. Um, they, your gear's going out there on mules. Um, because they are doing that, they do some, some awesome food with Dutch ovens and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it kind of gives you that almost cowboy experience out on the trail. In addition, you will be um, you will be uh, 
able to earn the horsemanship merit badge if your scouts would like to. They don't have to, but that is an added peak. Uh, they will be doing that. Um, all of our Sierra programs will pull the kids away from the traditional program for the full week. So they will not have opportunity to be in camp and earn a merit badge every day because they're going to be out of camp all week. Um, so just as another side note. The last program is Sierra CPT. It is for that older boy, uh, for those older boys um, who want to do something at camp more than just going to merit badges. Um, and they're going to be gone from camp. It, it can be run as a provisional uh, base program. We'll provide the staff. So if you have one or two boys interested, let us know. If we have availability for the week, we will work with other units going that week to put together a trip. Um, and they are going to do some backpacking or hiking. They're going to do some cycling. They are going to do some uh, high rope space stuff, leadership training, and outdoor ethics training. It's for the older boys. That one, again, just like the other programs, they really need to be conditioned for the activities because it is a higher pace base of activities. Um, your scouts should be able to bike for about 10 to 15 miles because um, one of the bike rides they're going to do that, and they may be going up uh, hills for a little while. So please let your, you know, if they're interested, make sure they are ready for those activities. But it's just that other activity that they can do uh, at camp, coming to camp. And, you know, I know all the troops always have those older boys that are struggling to go to camp because they're, they've done it before. Um, and, and there's other opportunities for them. CPT? Um, that is something they will learn while out on the trail. What's an acronym for? Yeah, that, it's an acronym. Um, if you would like to know, come see me afterwards. I will tell you. It's a secret that we try to avoid telling the boys because it's something they will learn while they're on the trail. Um, moving on, the most important information that everybody wants is our merit badge stuff. Okay, merit badge information is right here at the end, uh, and I will go through it now. Um, starting Monday, you can actually, you will be able to log into Double Knot. I'd wait until noon. I have to flip the switch right. Um, but starting Monday, you will be able to go in and put your roster together. Okay, you can't actually put any merit badges in yet. You will be able to put your boys and your adult leaders into the system. We do it this way because if you try to put your boys in and the leaders in and then try to put them in their merit badges, it's a lot of time. So we're helping give you guys some time now. You can start putting your roster in and not worrying about putting the merit badges in. The merit badge session, which did not copy here, will actually be going live April 13th. Uh, it says, oh, mine says the 15th. I may have caught it before I printed it. Okay, good. The, 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 the 15th, I think, was a Saturday, and we didn't want it to go live in case somebody had a question because we're closed on Saturday. So it is the 13th, which I believe is a Wednesday, um, and that's when they go live. It says it right here on the form, or does, right, I think mine didn't, but I added that after. Um, don't, you don't have to rush on April 13th at, at 1 a.m. to get your merit badges in. We don't cap classes, okay? We don't cap classes. We feel that hurts people um, that just can't get their, you know, they're waiting for their boy to fill out the form to get back to them. So we don't cap the classes. Um, if a class gets really big, we'll add another session and let you guys know, or we'll just split the class and add a second instructor and, and go with it. Um, some of the merit badges we may have to add and let you know, like the shooting sports, it's hard to split the class at the same time. So we may have to add another session. If we do, we'll let you guys know and have what we can do to get around it. But we don't cap classes. Um, we work with everybody to, to whatever class they're wanting, we will work with them on, on getting it at that time. Um, so don't worry, don't rush. You can wait until a week later. You can wait until a lot later to fill out your merit badge stuff. But it will be going live April 13th. Um, we will be sending out a, there's already on the website a how to fill out the, how to do the merit badge registration. It's already there, but we will be sending an email out to remind everybody when it goes live with attached copies of those instructions again, uh, just so everybody has them. Um, so like I said, you don't have to rush. We don't cap classes. On the level two, it says scouts 12. I will get through level two in a Thank second. You. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going through this in order. Um, the other thing with merit badges, we don't do blue sheet or do blue cards. We have our own system we've been using for 10 years now. It's an electronic system. We give you a blue, but not really blue, sometimes blue, but a, a merit badge completion report. It's on a full sheet of paper. It has our campus letter, our uh, watermark, our council office letterhead, the name, and it basically it says uh, Johnny got completed camping and fishing, and he got a partial in uh, life saving. And if it says a partial, it'll list requirements 1A, 1B, 1C. Those are the requirements he completed. 
every kid will get one of those papers and that is their blue sheet. With the merit badges, um, once you get that, you still need to take them and fill out an advancement form or I think many councils are doing the online advancement. You still have to record those in your own, in with your council. Um, we have these blue sheets and we use this system, but it doesn't coincide with Nationals uh, advancement system, so it doesn't copy over. You still need to fill out your own advancement forms and, and get those recorded with your council per their, their direction. Um, and then around uh, about a week from now, uh, not only will this packet be on the website, we actually have a youth packet that we put together that is basically this merit badge information plus some forms that they need all in one packet that you can go on download, print, and give to the boy and say, here's everything you need for camp. Um, so we do have a youth packet. We'll, we'll have this information, in it, and it will be up around the same time that this, the new version of this guide is up, and we will email that out to everybody to let you guys know. So you can download that packet, give it to them, and, and turn it in. And really quick. Yes? I noticed uh, cooking is not on here. Is there any opportunity for kids to do any requirements for cooking? Possibly, we do have an opportunity for the troop to, to get some um, um, food-based stuff from the kitchen, usually burgers or something, and they can cook it in their campsite for a lunch or dinner if they want. Uh, we don't really do the cooking merit badge because even after the change of the cooking merit badge, we found that the boys would still be cooking a lot of meals in camp, and it just we didn't see it as a, a good feasible merit badge for the camp. So we didn't want to offer it because the old merit badge, they basically, I think, had to cook almost all but like two meals. And the new merit badge, they still have to cook a large amount of meals. And it actually states to cook and share with the boys in your troop, um, which we, we, so with those requirements, we've decided still not to do cooking. There is the opportunity for that. Uh, if you're interested, you can always talk to us and we'll give you more information. Um, and we'll bring that up again at camp uh, as well. Um, so moving on to the next page, uh, which was brought up, is our merit badge difficulty chart. It basically, we've gone, over the years, we've gone and looked at all of our merit badges and give them a level of how hard they are, okay? The levels here, they're not set in stone, okay? They are not set in stone. So if you have a boy who's 12 or 13 and he really wants to do a level four merit badge, he is more than welcome to. Just note with that merit badge, it may be um, harder to, to complete it. Uh, one of the examples is canoeing merit badge requires the scout to get out of the boat, get back in the boat. That's the, one of the requirements. Another requirement is to have a scout get out of the boat, flip it, and then flip it again and get back in the boat. For a little 12 year old who's really small and scrawny, it is really hard for them to do that requirement. And that is why we've put together this difficulty chart. Um, because they may not be able to do the requirement, and we don't want them to go away from camp discouraged. Uh, they're more than welcome to try it, um, but based, we've gone through every merit badge, and we've determined based off of ages what we know they can complete by coming to camp. Um, and that is what this is here for. So if your parents ask, it's not set in stone. If they want to take a harder merit badge, they are more than welcome to. This just lets them know that they, there are more requirements. It may require them to do some homework throughout the week. Environmental science, they're going to have to write a, a, a paper. Um, it may, you know, some of the shooting merit badges are harder because they have to do points. Uh, about five years ago, they changed the archery merit badge and it became harder and we saw our, our pass rates drop drastically. Um, so that is why it's in a harder bracket now. So like I said, it's not set in stone. Um, it's just a recommendation based off over the years of experience from us uh, determining what is an easy merit badge, what is a hard merit badge. Um, so that is what that is for. You can look at it and kind of review it. The next form um, is our merit badge schedule. And at, this is a merit badge schedule and activity form. This is to be given out to your boys and they can fill it out. This is, this is done this way so it helps you guys fill out uh, the, the merit badge system later. You give it to your boy. They mark off what merit badges they want to do, and then they give them back to you, and now you have them. Because this list will reflect what is in our computer system. <clears throat> what it is, is the white boxes are when merit badges are being offered. Okay? The white boxes are when merit badges are being offered. The gray boxes is when they are not being offered. We do also find that some of our merit badges take a little more time to complete. Um, so there are some merit badges that are hour and a half sessions or two hour sessions. Um, so that is there. We have four merit badge times, 9, 10, 11, and 2. 
Uh, so this is kind of when all the merit badges are being done at what times. Um, so you can kind of look at it. Yes. I'm sorry, I do have one. So the white water, um, I was looking at it, it says it's an all day thing. Whitewater rafting, uh, we do the merit badge through a third party company called Sierra South. There's information on our website about them and that's, you will book it with them. It is a all day class, so they will be gone in the morning and come back in the after late afternoon, usually around four or five. Um, it is perfectly fine. They're gonna miss a day of class, that's okay. We understand. All they need to do is that scout needs to let their instructor know that they will be missing class for whitewater. Uh, and their instructor will work with them to find another time to, to get the class done, okay. um, or get the, 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 the time done. Uh, some of our merit badges are actually designed for a four day uh, time frame with that fifth day um, being makeup time set aside. Some are, some aren't. And the instructors will let your scouts know if they're done with their merit badge, you're done, you don't have to come back on Friday. Um, and then they can go do activities throughout camp. All of our program areas have free time-based activities that they can do. Uh, so that kind of goes with whitewater. And that's any day. If you're not, you know, if you're not doing the merit badge, they're going to be gone for two hours because they're doing a day trip whitewater. That's perfectly fine. Um, they just need to let their instructor know, and we'll find time to work with them to complete the, the requirements they missed for class. Do they actually do adults have to go with them on the whitewater thing? Uh, no, they don't have to go on the trip, but you, the adults are required to get them to, uh, you gotta drive them yeah, you got to drive them down there. We, okay. the camp does not provide uh, <laughs> transportation uh, for the whitewater trip. The whitewater rafting company is in Kernville, so it is 45 minutes away, so the, the adult leadership is required to, to get their scouts down. Um, the, the rafting company does have a, I think it's a 12 passenger van. And they also have a bus, so if you have a large unit that's going to go down, you can work with them on, on renting a bus. And they will come to camp, pick you up, take you down there, and at the end of your trip they will drive you back to camp. So those are options you can work with the rafting uh, company um, as well. Yes? Uh, do you know approximately what the cost is for participating in Whitewater? Whitewater is about, a, I think it's about $100, I think it's 102 It is on our website uh, with the accurate information. I think it's, I know it's about 100 For the whole day it's 100 yeah, that's for the merit badge. Uh, the single trips, I think there's one for 30 and the other is 40 or 50. Um, but the merit badge itself is $100. And does each scout have to have the canoeing and kayaking? They have to have canoeing or kayaking. It is a required, um, that's why it's on there. Uh, so they will have to have that. Um, and we are changing our whitewater program merit badge a little if you've been in there in the past. We will have one or two uh, days, usually in the evenings, after, you know, during the 7 o'clock time frame, where they will meet with a staff member at camp and go over a couple, you know, first aid requirement and get the paperwork um, saying that yes, they have completed canoeing or, or kayaking um, and going over some of those types of things. Yes. They just need the canoeing or kayaking if they're going to go for the uh, whitewater merit badge. That is for the like, yes. That you know, is for the merit badge. If they are for a few hours. Yeah, if they are going just on a normal trip, they don't need it. Um, it's only the canoeing or kayaking is only for the whitewater merit badge. Um, and if they haven't passed the swim test, that's perfectly fine because they're going to get a nice life vest on their trip. Um, and it's, we're basically, it's putting it in, in Sierra South's hands on, on that kind of stuff. Yes, in the back. Is there an ammunition fee on the shooting range? No, no ammunition fee on the shooting range. And that is for merit badge or free shoot. I'm going to go over the last two pages and then go over any questions you guys have. The last two pages, uh, we understand some of our merit badges have requirements that cannot be done at camp because they are a time requirement uh, thing. Uh, uh, camping is one of those. It requires them to be camping for 15 uh, nights, including uh, one of those being a full length summer camp. It's 15, right? 20. 20. Oh, is it 20? I keep, oh wait, it's 15, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was heavily active in the OI. I get those two mixed up every time. So it is 20, it's in the book. <laughs> so this form, the next one is the merit badge prerequisite form. It goes over all the merit badges that have the requirements they can't earn at camp. They will not be able to do them at camp, um, and that's what this form is. Um, if they, this is to, yes, they've done the requirements. Uh, they, they circle it, they get their troop leadership to sign it off, and they will turn it into the instructor saying, I have completed this, here's my proof. Um, if they don't have this form done because they didn't do the requirement, they can still go to the class. They're just going to get a partial. They will not earn the full merit badge. They will get a partial. And what you will do is you will take that partial back home and you will get it filled out. Or you will find a counselor at home to complete the merit badge. Um, unfortunately, once camp is over, we don't 
we're, we don't complete partial merit badges uh, that, you know, if they got a partial, we can't complete them because the summer's over. So yeah, those are the requirements that are, they have to do beforehand. In here it says that some of these not only requires this form, but proof. And you're going to ask, what, is, what do we mean by proof? If you go to the next page, this is our proof. It, it outlines the merit badges that require more than just this page and the proof. Because some of those merit badges um, say, do something and write a, a paper or talk to your counselor about it. So what this, this proof outlines what additional things they need to do. Um, one of the examples is citizenship of the nation, which requirement two um, requires them to visit some locations. So for this requirement, visit two places from the list and then write an essay at least one page in length describing where you visited, what you saw, what you learned. This essay will be turned into the merit badge instructor. So they will need to do that essay beforehand, have that essay and the form and turn them in together. The instructor may even go through it and say, what else, you know, what did you experience? What did you see? What did you hear? They're going to read the essay and then say, oh, what, you know, there's a couple more things. What did, you know, what if information? Um, so that, this next two pages just goes over what we're looking at for the proof. If the merit badge is not on the proof paper, that means all they need is that form filled out, the merit badge prerequisite, okay? Um, one of them is the white water. It's on here saying requirement three, which is that canoeing or kayaking. And it is not on the proof paper because all we need is the form filled out. Because that one is all, you know, they have it or they don't have it. The same as camping. Camping requires, and actually it does say in here, all we need is the proof, all we need is the form for that because the camping one is that 20 nights of camping. So, uh, moving on really quick. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's that information uh, about the merit badges. Uh, and then the last page uh, is just the contact information uh, for camp. It has the mailing address, the phone, ad the phone numbers, my email address. Um, we basically say, until uh, the, the, there's the camp number, the 760 is the camp number. That is not manned full time until June uh, 12th, it says on here. It'll actually be like the Friday before <coughs> camp starts, and I'll change the date on here for that. Um, that is when our, summer, our staff goes up a week before you guys, and we get camp set up, we do our training, and at that point is when the phone will be manned full time. So if you have a question before then, Please avoid calling the camp. It's going to go to a voicemail that our ranger checks about once a week. Um, and it may take a week and a half to get back to you about your question. Call the office number, um, which is that 818 number there. That will get to us here directly. It'll either go to Jonathan, our camping registrar, or it will go to myself. Um, and I, we will be able to get back to your answers. Uh, the other thing, um, my email address is here on the bottom. Uh, come May, I travel a lot. I have a group in camp every weekend, and I'm going to camp every weekend, and I come home every weekend, um, which is about a three-hour drive for me in one direction. Uh, so come then, it is going to be hard to get me on the phone here at the office. I you know, usually go up Thursday, I come back Sunday or Monday, so I'm not at the office as much. So by then, I really highly recommend emailing me. Um, you can always call. Jonathan is also our registrar. He will answer your questions. But just as a side note, come May, I am traveling a lot. I'm not always at my phone. Email is the best way to do it. Um, because usually while I'm at camp, I'm up until one, at least midnight to one in the morning. And at about 11 or 12, I will start looking through my emails and responding. So you will see really late emails coming through. Um, email is the best way at that point to get a hold of me. Before then, email is great. You can call, and we will be able to help you guys out. So that kind of goes over uh, that information. Um, before I get to everyone's questions, because I know I have a couple, uh, there is another form over there on your table to take. Um, you don't have to take if you don't want to. More than welcome to. Our council this year is hosting a Scout Expo uh, May Saturday, May 14th, at the Los Angeles Mission College in Silmar. It's a fun little event. Uh, you know, let your troop know about it. It's basically promoting scouting. We're going to have booths from troops. We're going to have booths from uh, different organizations and companies uh, while they are there. Um, you know, we're going to have the National Guard. We're going to have the police department. We're going to have different activities. We're having a, a engineering trailer which has, you know, 
a, a 3D printer to talk about those kind of things. It talks about STEM. There's going to be some opportunities for merit badge earning as well. So that is a one-day fun scouting event with live entertainment um, that's open to everybody and anybody. So I'll let your troops know. I know some of you guys come from far. It may be really hard to make that. That's fine. I just wanted to let you know, um, our, it's our council. It's about the first time we've done this in about 10 years that I know of. So we are really trying to push it hard, and I wanted to let you guys know. All right, question. I had one right here. Yes. Uh, for the new scout, mm -hmm. should we like recommend them to do the brave? Uh, uh, the Beaver Award? Yeah, and, yeah, it's uh, something new. How about the part time then? That is a good one. I did not go over that in there. We have the Trail to First Class program done for our Scout Craft area. Uh, you will see it on the activity schedule sheet. It is uh, an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, there's two sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. They only have to go to one of those. They don't have to go to both. If they end up going to both, they're gonna the, the morning session is going to be the same as the afternoon session. So if they go to the at both sessions that afternoon, they're going to be repeating what they went over in the morning. Um, so they only have to go to one of those, and that is working on the basic trail to first class requirements in their scout handbook. Um, so tenderfoot, second class, and first class requirements. Um, there is a sample sheet on our website of some of the requirements that they will uh, see or go through uh, in there, and that is on the forms section of our website. Uh, it's out in this packet a lot. All of a lot of our published information is on that forms page, so you will go there and see lots of things um, there that you can look at and read and, and talk about. Yes. Is there a fixed schedule? Let's say we have a scout that just needs the five mile hike. Is there a way you can find out when okay. they do that? Um, so for the scouts that only need one or two requirements, don't sign them up for that class. We have free time every afternoon from three to five and seven to eight. That is when they can go over to a specific area like Scoutcraft or Nature or Waterfront to work on those specific requirements. Um, so, you know, if they need the first aid requirement and that's all they need, tell them to go during the free time because they're going to sit in the class all week and be bored because it's information they already have done. Um, the other thing with it was we don't actually fill out the Scouts books. We give you, just like we give the completion report, we give you a, a paper that says, Johnny, and here's all the trail of first class requirements he did while at camp. We let you guys, as the troop leadership, determine what um, or how you're going to fill it out in the book. Some troops fill it out right away, some want to kind of review with the scouts what they did. And so we leave it up to you guys, as the leadership, to, to determine that. So, uh, so yes. Do they have to bring their books around? We do ask that they bring it because um, they will be referred to sometimes to look at the information in the book. We do knots and lashings. It's going to say, hey, open up your book. There's some pictures and we're going to talk about it. Um, same with some of the other information. So we do urge. They don't have to have it, but it is helpful if they have it because they'll re refer to the book for a lot of uh, information while they're doing their teaching. All right, and then the cost for these other uh, craft projects, is that billed to the troop or they have to bring cash? Or that is done through our trading post. If your troop wants to run a tab and do it, they can. Um, but it's just done through our trading post uh, so they can bring money to, to buy the supplies. And it's usually about $20 at the most for those ones because they're buying, uh, you know, for wood carving, they're buying a neckerchief slide kit. For leather work, they're buying um, a, a leather kit plus uh, either a lanyard or a paracord bracelet kit. And it's so they can uh, earn those extra, those extra things. And the tab that's run at the store, do they do that tab scout specific <coughs> so it can be tracked later? No, what we would do is we, we have, the tab would be your troop comes in, buys them, and then pays them. We don't have the, the running okay. tab going the whole time. It would be you as a troop <coughs> puts it on someone's credit card. Sorry, I, I kind of misspoke there, but yeah. Okay. So they, the troop can come in together and pick it all up, or they can do it individually. Um, what we do, we do suggest for you know, money that they're bringing to camp. You know, we in the to bring list. We had a here's how much we think they may want, so they can you know do those merit badges and then buy some knickknack souvenirs that they want to take home with them. Um, what some troops do is they actually kind of have like the banker <coughs> where that person has every kid's money. And you know, when the kid wants it, they come and ask for it. Um, it may be helpful for some of those young scouts that it, this could be their first time, and you don't want them to spend all their money on day one on all the soda and candy they can eat in one day. Um, so, so we have some troops have found that a very useful tool uh, as well. Okay. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, this Beaver leadership training. Mm -hmm. The boy goes to this uh, training for a week. When his troop gets up there, is he doing all the stuff with his troop then? Yeah, so we so he doesn't at first that 
And that program does not need an adult leader with them. We will provide the leadership and that kind of stuff. So that's the first question that someone may ask. Um, for the week they're there, they're with our staff doing the, the program that we've designed. For the second week, they are with the troop the whole time. Um, so, you know, helping the troop out. They're going to be staying in the troop's campsite um, and um, that kind of stuff. Um, they don't, you, your parents, they do need to be dropped off uh, the week before, but they don't need to be picked up at the end of that first week. Um, they are more than welcome to stay through the weekend um, and, and be ready for the troop. We have laundry facilities so we can even help get them nice, fresh, clean clothes. <laughs> Um, they will be, you know, hanging out with our staff. Our staff, because the distance is far for a lot of them, they don't go home on a weekend. They stay in camp. We feed them. We, you know, watch over everybody, and they just have some fun. They can relax. They can read. Uh, for that one day, that Saturday, we will let them, uh, let the beavers go into the staff lounge and watch a movie with the staff. It is kind of their reward for the end of the week. Uh, of doing it. They're not allowed in that building throughout the week that they're there as a beaver or the week after when they were there with the troop. But for that one day, we do allow them to go in there and enjoy the air conditioning and watch a movie. Um, so, but yes, we also will launder their clothes for them as well. And they're going to be there when you get there so they can help take you to their campsite. They're going to be working with that staff guide, um, the, the troop guy that's showing you around. They're going to work with him. and. When they come, they're already going to know that they're going to sign up for all these different activities that are happening, like the bike rides, uh, like the pentathlon, and, and these kind of things. So, and that answer is that one? Yes. Okay, right here. A uh, question on the Meripets, only because I, I got some kids interested in the astronomy. Mm -hmm. It says offered at 7 oh. p.m. only, but it's white boxed at early yeah, in the morning. Yeah, that, that is a correction. It is oh. offered in the morning at 9. It does require, I miswrote it, it does actually require that they're going to have to go on a star hike at night. Um, so We do all of the book information and talking about the telescopes and the different types of stars and planets and, and all that nitty gritty stuff at the 9 o'clock session and then in the evening um, and they'll be told when it's usually around 8 or 9 when the sun is no longer there and we see stars in the sky uh, that they will then get together as a group and then go over star charts and placement of stars in the night sky. Um, so that is the, the addition uh, there. Yes? Uh, on the map, mm -hmm. so from class to class, the standing indications everything helps the subs to choose class. Since last summer came, some of them choose the class. <laughs> so in, in, that, in, that, no, yeah, in that activity list that's in there, if you notice, you'll see the merit badges. And right before the merit badge name, it says an area. That is the area that that merit badge is done in. So like it says um, aquatics, and then under that title that says aquatics, it says canoeing, kayaking, life-saving, rowing, swimming. That is in, in the aquatic section, the waterfront section, that's what merit badges are happening there. So the big one is like the nature section. All of those nature merit badges under the, the column nature, they're happening at the nature lodge. Um, so that is kind of how it distinguishes. Uh, we do have camp maps up there as well that we can hand out to all the boys. And we, you know, we understand the first day is very hectic, and so we do have staff around that can help answer those questions. Where is kayaking, or where is fishing being held, and you know those kind of things. <coughs> yeah. Travel to and from just by foot. Yeah. Okay. And another quick question regarding uh, restroom facilities. Mm -hmm. Campsite, only at the shower house. There is restrooms at the shower houses along with the showers, and then um, there are porta potties, uh, both outhouses in most campsites or porta potty close by the campsites for for people's usage. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The Aquacade. I'm just curious what that is, or if it's on Friday. Aquacade. Um, Aquacade is our Troop versus troop competition Friday afternoon at the waterfront. Um, at, on Friday, you will actually get a list of what the events are, so you can work with your troop to sign out the events. But there's, you know, a backwards uh, canoe race. There's a scoutmaster splash. There's a relay race in the water. There's those fun troop versus troop competitions down at the waterfront. It's kind of just a fun time to kind of end the week of camp. Can that be in um, any of the guides, or is that on the website? I'm just curious. The, 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 the activities? Yeah. They will be handed out Friday. Um, there are some times where they change week to week, uh, depending on conditions of, of the water, or you know, hey, maybe we got a new thing in that we really want to try, so we throw it in. So uh, Friday is when you'll get the list of what's in there. So, yes? Uh, the cost of the CRX petition, so what day is that it's on the website? 
it's on the website. Sierra Expeditions is its own basic camp program. Its costs are on the website, and it goes into more information. But it's a, all of them are a week-long program, so they're not going to be in normal camp. Um, with that, if you have a boy signed up now and they're moving over to Sierra Expeditions, that's fine. We will transfer them, you know, remove them out of traditional program, transfer them into the new registration, and we can even move their money for them so that you, you have that taken care of. Um, and you can contact us, and we will help you with that. Uh, yes? Additional cost for CPT? CPT is the, it's the cost on the website. It's the same cost as coming to camp. So, yes, in the back. Um, are you going to be doing one of the, uh, last year you guys did the um, out-of-camp uh, overnight? Um, we are finishing details on that, and those details will be coming out uh, within the next month. So once I have those, we'll put, I'll put a little video together saying what's going on, and we will be emailing and contacting everybody. And then like four years ago, you guys did a thing where you had, each troop had one night, like the Wednesday night, in their camp site where they all cooked. That was replaced by the, the thing from last year. Overnight. Yeah, the overnight from last year. So we will, once we know, we're still working on the final details, once we get those out, um, we'll let everybody know what's going on. I was hoping to have those done by this meeting. Unfortunately, some of it just timing could not happen. It didn't allow us to get that finished. So right here. Um, two questions. Um, what is the cost of ammunition for the right There is no ammunition cost for camp. We do not charge for the merit badges for rifle and shotgun, and we do not charge for the free time shoots for rifle or shotgun. Um, we do do no ammo charges at camp whatsoever. You had a second question is, um, I currently have 10 scouts scheduled for um, the high adventure cycling, mm -hmm. and I had a leader, but it looks like that leader son is now going to be um, joining the Air Force, so he will not be attending. So now I have 10 scouts, but he's not a leader. How do I? Um, I really urge you find another leader that can go. Uh, we do require one leader on there. Or I have, um, to, move, or I have to move them. Yeah, or we can move them out into traditional. And if we need to, um, chat. if you can't find a leader, chat with me. Um, we may not be able to do the full trip, but maybe we can do some special activities for them to get it through, because I understand that's really hard. Unfortunately, we don't, we, we don't provide two staff members for those trips. Just it's the way our staffing works. So but we, we can figure something out. Yes. Um, related to this, we're, we're in the same area, mm -hmm. brother and sister. Um, we've got a group, not quite ten boys. We've got two adult leaders. Is there a way to kind of have them all go together? We can we can work that out. Um, if you guys want to chat, and we can chat with me after, we can we can get that worked out. These kids all go to school together. They're all yeah, not not a problem. We can work that out. All right. Yes, right here. Uh, I wasn't entirely clear. So for lunches, I know in other camps they they go and get food, bring back their. All of our food is provided at the Big Top. Um, we cook all the meals. The only exception to that is if your troop wants to do what they, we call them troop AGTs, area, you know, not really troop AGTs, troop uh, GTs, which is troop get-togethers, um, we can provide food that you can cook in your campsite if you would like to do those fun activities. And usually it's burgers or dogs with uh, charcoal. Um, so we can provide that if your troop is interested. They don't have to do that. But all lunches and breakfast in there, they're all at the big top. We provide all the food, and we, we have it there. With that, with the other thing we do have that you will, you'll get more information on how to sign up at camp is we do, um, we do have ice cream kits, so hand crank ice cream kits, which everybody loves. The kids get to spend an hour cranking that awesome old-school machine, um, sometimes two hours, depending on how, how fast and quick the kids are at it. Um, but we do have those available. And with obviously, with fire permitting, we have Dutch oven cobblers. Um, and we provide all the stuff you need for those. So we provide all the ice cream based stuff, and then the cobbler is just a basic peach cobbler that we provide the materials for. Um, nope. We provide the Dutch ovens, we provide the hand crank ice cream machines, we provide the ice and the salt, and we provide the charcoal for the Dutch ovens. <laughs> Yep. Yes, and, and we'll usually get paper and do that. So. You have an adult or uh, scout spending in the COPE program. Mm -hmm. That's two hours a day, every day. Yes, it's it's basically the COPE program is just like a merit badge program. COPE is. Um, I will tell you that one because it's out there. It's a Boy Scout program. Challenging outdoor personal experience. It's an awesome uh, thing for those older scouts, you know, the scouts you have in your troop that maybe they want to do one or two merit badges, but they want a little more. COPE is for them. They're going to be spending three days playing um, initiative games, teamwork building, 
getting them out of their shell. If you have that quiet, shy kid uh, who doesn't talk very much, um, usually by the end of the week he's, he's talking. Our, our staff will make him talk. By that I mean if he doesn't talk in one of the games, everyone else somehow, there's always a story to go with those games, and everybody else somehow lost their voice, and poor Tommy, who has been quiet all week, is the only one in the group that can now talk. We find a way to do that. Um, I actually, before I became camp director, I ran that program for three years. Um, so it is an awesome thing for them. Uh, so like I said, three days they're playing on the ground, playing games, initiative games, getting to know each other, teamwork. The last two days they get to spend on our high ropes course, which is 35 feet in the air, um, on telephone poles and wires, and they go up like a cargo net, and they go across a balance beam and some wires, and they make it to our main tower where they get to go down our 400-foot zip line to the bottom. Um, so it is a week long. They have to be there Monday through Friday. Um, we do usually allow one day to miss. You know, if you're going to be gone for whitewater rafting or something like that. Uh, we do allow one day to be missed, but we do want them to be there all week because it's just like a merit badge. There is no actual merit badge that goes with it, but it's just another thing to do it. Uh, the youth coat, which is 14 and older, is done in the mornings. The adults, they have their own separate cope time, which is in the afternoons. And it is on the activity sheet for both the youth and the adults. Uh, I think I answered his question over there, correct? On the time, okay, right here. Uh, yes? Do you help cope with fever or separate things? Um, when they're there, the, the, uh, the, the yeah, we can definitely work with that. Okay. So, yes? Um, the adult leader training huh? is, um, so we're gonna have some of the adult leaders, um, but some of them are taking the first portion of the specific stuff. Yeah, so we do. Um, so the on the on the sheet here where it says Tuesday to Thursday for the adult leader training, that is the was it? I think they changed the title now. It's Scoutmaster specific. It used to be Scoutmaster and Assistant Scoutmaster. They just changed the title. Um, it's Scoutmaster specific training and then introduction to outdoor leadership skills. The introduction to outdoor leadership skill one, we do a little differently. Um, we give them a blue card. We give them this card that says, on this day, at this time, go to this area, and you will work on these requirements. We have staff ready to go when they get there, and they will work on them. So if they don't need the Scoutmaster one, and they just want to do that, they, sh they go on the first day, let the instructor know, and the instructor will give them the card, and they can go from there. I fill it out and then turn it back into that staff member and they will have uh, credit completion. Um, some adults that already have the one and need the other, they actually find going to both is a lot of fun um, because there's always, you know, as the instructor's teaching the course, there's always a lot of conversation and talk about, hey, how does this troop do it versus that troop? And maybe they can learn something new. So we always, every, every session we always have that, that leader who's been a scoutmaster for three or four or five years going going to that training again, and then we have that brand new, they just joined the troop, and they're trying to get some basic information about it. No special equipment you need? Nope, 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 they show up on that day. And those are for those two trainings. We do offer other adult leader trainings throughout camp, uh, trek safely, climb on safely, um, wilderness first aid, um, and... Uh, uh, Safe swim defense and safety afloat. Those are offered at other times throughout the day, and we'll announce when those are being offered and, and how. Uh, That's like a whole week deal. That is a whole week deal. Um, I'm finalizing all the details. Uh, we've had a gentleman who's been coming up for the last three years teaching that. It is pretty much what it is, is it's every day, and it's usually like the morning session from 9.15 or so to lunch. And it's, it's a full week. Um, there is a, an additional cost to it, which is just paying the cost uh, of the instructor. Um, so as soon as I were finalizing that detail, and we'll have that out. But last year, I believe it was $50, and it was uh, all day, Monday through Friday, in the mornings. So I think it was 9 to 12, 9 to 11.30, kind of depending on how long that class session goes. Um, that instructor actually also does offer CPR training uh, throughout the week and helps out with CPR stuff. Um, so the gentleman's name is Dan Doggett. He'll be there throughout the week. If you guys have come up in the past, he's been there the last three years doing this. And it's definitely a great opportunity. Um, as he'll mention when he's talking about it, you're starting to notice that more and more things are highly suggesting having more than just the basic CPR and first aid. Um, a lot of, you know, Philmont and Northern Tier, all those high adventure bases are now requiring at least one leader to have wilderness first aid training along with um, 
some of the other places as well. So that's another opportunity. It is, uh, it is a, there is a cutoff. I believe it's 15 or 16 per class, and he'll offer <coughs> one class a week. Uh, he'll be there talking more about it uh, with you guys Sunday night and actually taking sign-ups then uh, from the troops. Um, so, yeah. yes? Yeah, boys that have uh, like partial blue cards already, and you're offering the Mary Badge Act class, can they bring their blue card? Bring the blue card. Uh, they can then talk to the instructor. Depending on what it is, they may say, come back at this time and we'll work on it, or they may say, come this, you know, come all week and we'll finish those requirements. It, it's going to depend on what the blue card is, but bring them, bring them. Talk to the instructor. The instructors know to accept them, and they'll work with them. Um, but it is up to the area director to kind of determine how that blue card is going to be applied. And what we'll usually do is instead of returning the signed blue card, we'll just add it to their, their record. Um, and we do it that way because we keep this electronic database. So in five years when that scout is doing their eagle, and for some reason they don't have their completed blue card, they either can't find the paper and they can't find the record, we, you can contact us and we can get that to you for that eagle. So any partials that they bring up, we can definitely work with and we'll throw them onto those records as well. Um, yes? Um, I have a provisional scout coming from Alaska. Uh -huh. Do I need to send out the form differently for him? Or no. Just add him. Um, you can add him, and we'll be giving you all his stuff anyways, and you can go from there on how to get it back to him. Okay. So, okay. Yes? Camperships. Camperships are available. There's a form on our website. Um, it's on the forms page at the bottom. It says camperships. Some people have already asked. It says the 15th of February. Don't worry about that. We call it a soft date um, because... We, we use the same form for all of our camps, and for Emerald Bay, our sister camp, there's a, a deadline for things. So we set that date so we can apply camperships to everybody before those deadlines. But we do have camperships available. Um, we do give camperships out to scouts both in council and out of council. Um, we don't want money being, you know, they couldn't pay to come to camp. We don't want that being a reason why they, they didn't come to camp. Um, so if they need help, we will help them. Um, we usually do about 40 to 50 percent. If there's some extenuating circumstance, come, you know, send me an email, give me a call, and we'll work with it, and if we need more, we'll figure out how to get more um, money. We had two years ago, and I, I say that because two years ago a troop told me after they were at camp that one of their boys had to drop out at the last minute because um, – uh, their their mom lost their job and their dad, you know, had medical bills, and, you know, got really sick and had a ton of medical bills and just they couldn't afford it. And we didn't know. So we don't want that to be a reason why we if we knew would have been said, bring them to camp and we'll be fine. Um, so we do do camperships, usually 50 to you know, 40 to 50 percent. But if there's more struggles, talk to me individually and I will help you guys out uh, on getting that figured out. We have donors every year that give money specifically for getting kids to camp because we have some great donors who understand how important camp is to the scouts and we want, they want kids to go. So we do have them available. Uh, fill out the form. If you're out of council, it asks for some signatures. If you can't get them, just submit the form. We don't want you to wait three weeks or a month because you're trying to track down your district executive to sign the form and your uh, committee chair for the, the district to sign it off. So if you can't get those signatures, fine. Get that sent in and we will work with you guys on them. Um, at this point, if your, the next question is, we already filled out a campership. Uh, those were all applied, um, unless you've turned it in within the last week, those have all been applied to your accounts already. Uh, you can log into Double Knot, and we've done it differently. So if for those who have been in the camp before, and it used to say campership $2,000, it actually now says campership, scout's name, and the amount that we accredited to your account. It was a change we decided to do because there was always a confusion. Wait, I filled out five people. Is this five people or is this four people? How many people is this? So we've actually decided to just put the scout's name on there um, for that. Now, one addition with that, we, we will, okay, um, we will, thank you for that, we will ask that, um, your scout helps us in, in recognition for those that, you know, those people that donate money, um, they're doing it because they want the kids to go to camp, but we love to give them thank you letters, uh, thank you notes, thank you cards for, for that help, and we love for them to come from the scout that actually got the campership, um, because it just, it's that other thing, and usually it's like, it's really simple, it'll say, thank you for coming, to, you know, thank you for helping me get to camp, this is what I got to do at camp. It's 
basically, you know, we just send those out to them, and our donors love them. It's just that other, like, great, we made something. And, you know, some donors, if you go to offices that donate money to organizations, they have a wall where they put pictures and cards and whatever. Um, so we will be talking with troops that, that got camper ships to get some of those cards. They don't have, you know, the scout doesn't have to put his name if he doesn't want. It could just be a general scout. But we like, you know, the, our, our donors like those kind of things, and we like to help them with it so they can put it on their brag wall saying they donated to the Boy Scouts, and here's a scout that got to go to camp for it. Um, so we will, throughout the week while there, we will be talking to the adult leadership to get those helped out. And we have cards that we give, and we can give directions and, and that kind of stuff too. Um, so, but the campership form is very simple. It's pretty much the scout's name and their registration or their registration number. We don't ask for tax documentations or um, someone asked me uh, paycheck stubs. We don't ask for those things. We're leaving it up to you guys as the leadership filling out the form to say yes, that scout needs help because you guys know your 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 scouts a lot better than I know your scouts. So we kind of take it if you're giving us the form. That is, that is all we need. So I know that went on for a little while, but I, I hope that helped you guys. Uh, any other questions? Daniel. Go for it. Uh, daily inspections of campsites. We do it. We do. Uh, uh, approve the project every day and then go to the score? Or? It's pretty much just keeping the, the campsite clean. Um, if they want to do a fun little improvement project every day, we'll sometimes highlight those throughout the week, but they don't have to. It's more of just making sure the campsite is kept clean. Um, and there will be a kind of visit from a, a commissioner every day doing that. So, yes? Yeah, they, they can do if you have If you want to do an improvement project every day, tell them, and they will give you some great ideas. Um, but they, they're not needed. Uh, so it's just, so I know some troops go to camp and every day they want to build something even cooler than the day before, like an awesome gateway or something. Um, so that is fine. Um, and we'll work with you guys on that. So. And the climb on safely, is there a cost for that? Mm -mm. So the only cost for the adult leader, the additional adult leader trainings we offer is that wilderness first aid. And that is because the instructor is, is taking care of the class and he has to give some money to his agency that approves it. Um, and he's... Yeah, he's paying a company, and then he actually, part of the, his money, and he'll tell you the spiel, part of his money is actually going to be donated back to the camp through an organization called the Friends of Camp Witsit, which is our alumni association. They are, every year they're raising money to donate uh, things to camp. Um, and one of, the, one of those, I, I didn't even put in the guide to think about it, but they actually have a crab fest coming up uh, the second week, second Saturday of April, and all proceeds to that event are actually going towards campership, uh, a donation towards campership to get kids to come to camp. If you're interested, it's all you can eat crab for $45. Um, so for those people that love crab, it's it's something for you guys. It's over in Santa Clarita at the Elks Lodge. Um, the Elks Lodge is donating the facility for us, and like I said, all proceeds are going to go back towards camperships. Uh, if you are interested and you want more information, come see me after. I can direct you to that and get you uh, that information as well. So, any other questions? Yes? You need to save yourself some email if you want to explain how mail does or does not okay. work. Okay. Yep. Does. Yes. So, at this point, if you need to go, I understand. It's I'm a captive audience right now. Uh, by that, I mean I'm here because I have another one of these at two anyways. So, you can ask me as many questions as you want. Or if you need to leave... That's perfectly fine. Um, you can always contact me after the fact. Uh, mail. We do do mail at camp. Um, we usually, rec you know, if, you're, if your parents want to send care packages or letters, we do ask them or we recommend that they send them uh, almost the week beforehand because mail, you know, we're used to, I send a, I send a letter from here to, to, to uh, San Diego and it gets there in like two days. Because we're at a further distance, it's going to take an extra two or three days to get to the camp. So we usually tell parents, send them a, a little bit ahead, a week ahead is fine. If they get there early, that is perfectly fine. We will actually store them away. And when your, when your troop comes in, we'll say, hey, we got mail for you guys. Here it is. Um, if they come late, we will unfortunately have to find our return to sender stamp and place it all over the box and give it back to our postal carrier uh, to, to return it back to them. Um, but do it a, a little early. If they want to send packages, they can either use uh, USPS or UPS. Uh, those are the two we highly recommend. Um, FedEx has been hit or miss on 
if they bring our mail to camp, sometimes the mail ends up at Sierra South in Kernville, and we have to, you you know, sometimes Sierra South hey, says, oh, you're a troop, you're going to camp, what's it? Do you mind taking this with you, you know, someone's care package or something? Or they'll call us and say, hey, we got packages and we send somebody down. Um, We've we've been fighting with FedEx for years, and so every every other year it seems like we can get them to come to camp that whole summer, and then it just drops again. So I really highly recommend UPS or USPS uh, for those purposes. Uh, and then we'll do a mail. Uh, basically, the mail is available at the office, our our little office, um, every afternoon. We ask that an adult leader goes to pick it up. We will not give the mail to the individual boys or or that. We ask that an adult leader comes and gets it. So and we'll go over that at camp on how that works as well. I had a question in the back. No, no. Unfortunately, we just there's days where we'll have 200 packages, and that's going to take 20 or 30 minutes to get through if we were to announce each one at flags. Um, with that, you'll notice the, the flags are actually done before meals on. So at before breakfast, we'll do flags and then dismiss the breakfast. And for every day, but. Um, Sunday, and we'll go over it at camp, we do fly, evening flags before dinner so we can break to, to dinner. And we'll, we'll go over that schedule again at camp as well. Any other questions? Yes? The uh, fever program the week ahead of time, do they typically come up? Do troops like this send one boy or two? Um, typically, most troops will send at least two um, just so they have a buddy to be with the whole time because there are some weeks where it's just those two boys. And there's some weeks where it's five or six boys from all over, from three or four troops. Um, it's it's hit or miss on how many boys. So some troops will send at least two. That way they have a buddy. Um, you can send more than two. You can send one if you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, but it's you know it's for those older those those leadership the boys that are going to be the leadership at the camp. Um, you know it's we find it a great resource for them. So uh, next question. Uh -huh. yeah. Some of the boys that considered the the cycling one, they're considering doing. Uh, a day down to the white rafting. Uh, we can... Before or after, or can they mix that in? Well, usually, if they're going to do that, we'd ask that they move it to Friday, and we can bring them in Thursday, and then they have Friday to do that and then relax. Um, we can talk a little bit more about that after the fact, because um, there is some, some troubles with those things. We'll talk after the fact. But we were thinking of just having them come on Saturday, do up then all day, just to... Uh, and, that, and that is a possibility. Um, and we actually find some troops go Saturday before they, they come to camp, or or I, I did it once as a scout. We actually went, the Saturday we were leaving camp, we went down and did a whitewater trip and then had lunch and then left. So those are other possibilities as, as well. Um, we just, you know, call Sierra South to work out those details uh, for that. So, any other questions? So. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys. I'm here, so if you wanted to ask something a little more than what I talked about, I will be here to help answer those.